Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon in Chicago and today we have with us Murli Thirumale, GM of Portworks. Murli, it's great to have you on the show again. It's really good to be here, Sapna. Since we are here at the event, I would love to hear from you a bit about what has been your experience so far? We've been in many different uh, KubeCons now. This is my seventh or eighth one. And so I've been, you know, involved with the, with the Kubernetes movement right from the beginning as a as a kind of a co-founder of Portworks. And so the difference that I see this year is really that there is a air of of innovation, but also an air of maturity. the The industry has really come to the point where you see large companies, industrial companies, you know, who are deploying now at scale. So there are two differences, right? The scale of deployment is means that customers are putting mission critical applications on Kubernetes and are doing it in, in a large scale. The second thing is that many large, you know, traditional companies who you think of as not being innovators, right? You always find some companies in the Silicon Valley or things like that who are early adopters. But really, this KubeCon is to me an example where we've kind of crossed into the early majority, both in terms of the number of companies deploying, but also the types of applications and scale of deployment. So it's very exciting time for, for the Kubernetes community. And if you look at this Kubernetes community, this whole ecosystem, what role do you see of Portworks? And also, just, just give a quick kind of overview of, you know, because you folks move to uh, pure storage. So so talk a bit about what Portworx is today yep. and what role you are playing in this ecosystem. Portworx's role is very simple. In, in the ecosystem, Portworx is responsible for ensuring that applications and their data are deployed with high resilience, reliably. So we provide uh, things like persistent storage, we provide backup, we provide disaster recovery and data services that are all managed underneath Kubernetes. So when uh, customers deploy containerized applications, really there's two parts to that application. There's the app and there's the data. And Kubernetes is used to orchestrate the app. Portworks is used to orchestrate the data. So we complete Kubernetes in allowing it to be managing not just the app but also the data. And as you were earlier saying that you know the exciting thing was that you know maturity is also the innovation is also there. Uh, third thing that I want to add to that is adoption. Yeah. Talk a bit about what kind of trends you are seeing because Kubernetes has now moved into production. Yeah. So when it comes to adoption, because you folks have been around for a while, so what are you seeing there, what are the trends? So, you know, I would say there are three significant trends that are happening. One of them is, is really uh, all over. You can see it everywhere. And that is the creation of platform engineering. So Swapnil, uh, platform engineering is just the maturation of DevOps, right? So what platform engineering is now, it is taking what used to be a cultural phenomenon called DevOps, like let have developers and operations work together, to now that has been formalized into an organization. They have a budget, right? And think about it as shadow Kubernetes IT is being consolidated now. People were doing tiny Kubernetes projects. There were islands of Kubernetes being done. Now all of that is being consolidated into one organization with the responsibility of making sure Kubernetes is deployed centrally and deployed well. The other part of that is that platform engineering is now responsible for a curated stack. They pick the technology stack and they recommend that and they manage that technology stack. So they provide, you know, Gartner had a great phrase for it. They called it paved roads. It's a, it's a way to ensure that the Kubernetes uh, uh, deployment that is being done by developers is always assured to run at scale, that it's going to be reliable. It has, to, it has failover, it has guardrails to ensure that people don't misuse Kubernetes beyond its limits. Uh, they also allocate uh, uh, resources uh, per per uh, you know the the requirements of the application. Provide billing, provide security. So it is really an example of uh, what used to be happening with cloud IT 
10, 15 years ago is now happening with Kubernetes. No, very well said, very well yeah. said. So that is one, one trend. Oh, okay. Right? The second trend is something that everybody uh, is familiar with now is how AI ML and the Kubernetes stack, the cloud native stack are converging. Um, everybody, of course, now, this is every place I go, I hear AI ML, AI ML, largely because of generative AI. But, but if you think about it, AI ML is, has certain characteristics. The models are changing. Data scientists are changing the models all the time. So rapid change. Second thing is people, uh, when they go into training or they, uh, they, the needs, the number of, um, um, the amount of data that's being brought into the system varies and the number of users varies. So it needs a very elastic system. Third, because data scientists don't understand computer computers and storage, they need a self-service model. So all of this points to why containers and the Kubernetes model is ideal because it provides self-service for developers and data scientists. It provides a elastic kind of use model. And third, it provides the ability for people not to have to make copies of data. So if you think about it, the data is constantly changing. In AI ML, data is all important. So one way to ensure that the data is curated and, and managed properly is to have one copy that is available to everybody through a virtualized model, which is what Portworks provides. So what we're seeing is the second trend is the, is the convergence of AI ML and the use of containers and Kubernetes in AI ML. And so these are two trends that are very, very, very common in, uh, that we're seeing all over in, in KubeCon. When we look at some of these trends, uh, these trends are sometimes driven by innovation. At the same time, sometimes these trends lead to innovation. What does it, these trends mean for Portworx? I will tell you one thing about, about uh, I think not just Portworx, but, but most co companies in the Kubernetes ecosystem. You know, people think that the innovation happens only at, at the uh, uh, software companies or at, the, at startups. The reality is that to require us to be able to introduce innovative capabilities, you need innovative customers uh, who also are willing to kind of take these, these technologies on. So there are two innovators in this ecosystem, right? There's the creators of the technology and there are the users of the technology, which is, and, and so Portworx, for example, has always created new capabilities with a co-creation model. We have lead customers who help create these new technologies with us. They are the leaders in their industry. So we've had customers like T-Mobile, for example, or Ford. Uh, there are customers who have created uh, these new capabilities by working with us in helping to deploy them, helping to improve them, and create that product market fit. So, uh, you know, it, 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 this, this is a wonderful ecosystem with both, both uh, suppliers and users coming together to kind of create the new technologies of the future. I want to talk about people for a while, which means cultural changes. With, with these trends or the whole evolution of Kubernetes landscape, of course, we have been talking about DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, sorry, platform engineering you touch upon. Do you see the next wave of cultural change or you see that platform engineering is where we have finished for a while, but we'll see in a bit. In the early days of Kubernetes, um, the technologies were evolving very fast and they were not necessarily as stable. Now, six, seven years later, the technology has stabilized. There's a lot of innovation going on, but there's also a lot of stability. The APIs are well-defined. There's been consolidation in the industry. A lot of products have matured to the point where you can deploy them reliably. So what does this mean? Well, one thing that it means is that you don't have to be as much of an expert to be able to deploy some of these new Kubernetes uh, stacks. The stacks are mature, they work pretty well. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the ability of customers to be able to develop, uh, to be able to develop applications and deploy these applications has gotten a lot better because their expertise needed is, is a little bit less. The second thing that has happened, which is very significant, is a lot of these technologies are being offered as a service. And when something is consumed as a service, you know, Swapnil, you know this, right? 
then you need less expertise. A service is meant for ready, ready-made use. It's like, it's off the shelf, right? And you can just use it without necessarily having to go under the covers. And so the, that's the other sign of maturity in the industry. A lot of our services have been offered as a service, including, for example, Portworks now is offering a lot of our storage, DR, backup as a service. Uh, the third thing that I would say is that more and more what I see happening is that like most mature technologies, uh, it will become more and more invisible. People will use Kubernetes without knowing they're using Kubernetes in the future, right? It, 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 it reminds me, you know, uh, that that the 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 in the past, uh, you people would talk about transistors uh, and ICs. Now we we have these things. You know, there's you know thousands of chips inside a car. There's probably 50 microprocessors, and we don't even think about it, right? Because it's all invisible. So the goal is really to make Kubernetes something that is so powerful but also more and more invisible so that people just get the benefits of it without having to kind of uh, having to know each aspect about it. We hear a lot of time that Kubernetes is too complicated, too complex, which is, you know, it was not designed to be, as a, but uh, uh, there is a discussion that, you know, I, there was a Twitter thread a few days ago, you may have seen it too, yeah. was more about, you know, it's just too complicated for developers. What's next? To make it easier. So when you do say it will become, what are you seeing that, is there will be a successor, a new technology, or it just vendors will make it easier and invisible? I, th I think it is about vendors making it easy, easier, and also um, operating much more with a, for example, a GUI interface. Or, um, you know, uh, you don't really need to know all about the, the APIs that Kubernetes offers to be able to kind of use the APIs, right? So um, a perfect example is in the in the early days of Portworks and for Kubernetes, people used to operate on the CLI. But today we provide you know use a, a user interface where people can just point and click, drag and drop, right? All of these things are going to make it so that you it just becomes more invisible. I actually don't see. Kubernetes being supplanted by something new for quite a while, right? Because it is really still on a very steep ramp of, of use. And uh, the maturity of the technology means that more and more people are using it and are not asking us for new fundamental technologies. They're asking for more, uh, uh, you know, more of an ecosystem around Kubernetes. Kubernetes itself has become like a meta platform for other people to build data platforms like Portworks or security platforms or orchestration platforms. Uh, so uh, Kubernetes is almost uh, now a, a sub a kind of meta technology now for other technologies to be built on top of it. I look at it as like the Linux kernel. You know, it's Great example. Thir you know, 30, 40 years, yep. and it's, so it's not about the success, you know, that is, so it has become a very foundational technology. Exactly. So, uh, yes, of course, there are vendors who are making it easy to use yep. Linux. Same thing is there. One last question before we wrap this up is uh, uh, chat GPT or generative AI, you know. What role do you see of generative AI in the Kubernetes ecosystem? or for port works? There are so many different ways that generative AI or any AI actually is going to become uh, part of our ecosystem, right? The, the, the first and, and most simple obvious thing is for us to use it in our business, right? So as an example, Portworks is, is beginning to use uh, uh, generative AI uh, to be able to improve our documentation, right? Very simple, improve our documentation, improve our test plans, improve uh, the way that we actually create examples and demos for, uh, for our, our, our products. So one, just using it inside of our business. Second way to do to, that we're beginning to use it is use it in our products. So uh, Copilot is a very common version that we actually have now, for example, uh, when you create an, uh, scripts within a, a, a Portworks product, you can now create a setup by just telling uh, in common natural NLP, natural language, 
uh, what kind of, of uh, goal you're trying to accomplish with your setup and and the co-pilot generates the code that is used by, by our product. So it's built in as an interface to our product. The third thing is obviously helping our industry, helping to uh, enable uh, chat GPT or other applications, right? And there again, I just talked about a little bit earlier how the nature of containers in Kubernetes, the fact that it is very elastic, the fact that it is very programmable and, and uh, you know, very, very resilient uh, in terms of being able to kind of deal with various workloads, the fact that it is a self-service model, uh, the fact that you can, uh, by using technology like Portworx that virtualizes the underlying data, not have to make multiple copies of data. Data curation and ensuring the provenance of the data is very important in, in AI. Uh, so all of these things are reasons why you would use a container and Kubernetes stack to be able to deploy uh, you know, uh, LLM models, uh, use uh, just AI models, and even ML models. So I think there's a natural convergence of how these things come together in our industry. Merlin, thank you so much for taking time out today, and uh, great insights there, you know, and I love the way you talk about those trends and the role of culture, and of course, the role of Portfox in this ecosystem. Uh, thanks for all those great insights, and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Absolutely a pleasure. Thank you so much for that.